on Nationwide this evening, an art exhibition with a difference as we meet painters from West Waterford and beyond, whose work has been on display in new and exciting ways in the town of Dungarvan. And in County Wicklow, we meet a former air hostess who gave up flying to start painting and has now become a successful artist. You're welcome to Nationwide and to Dungarvan and County Waterford, where we are about to experience an art trail featuring the dye transfer prints of artist Jean Curran. Jean has created a series of selected frames from the original 1958 Technicolor movie Vertigo and then printed them using the same process by which the film was made. Jean is one of only four dye transfer printers worldwide and is the only artist in the world creating art by this method. We caught up with Jean in her studio to see the process of making the prints which are featured in shop fronts all around here in Dungarvan. So I'm from here in County Waterford. I grew up about a mile from where I live and work here now. I started photography in, I studied photography in St. John's College in Cork. And it was when I started photography there that I first walked into a dark room. And as soon as I, I was in, I, I knew I was going to love it. And that was the thing for me. I loved processing my own black and white film and, and making my own black and white prints. And I did some color printing. But when I left school, I started, left college, I started working as a photographer for the newspapers. And it was a digital world. There was no black and white uh, film there was no dark rooms so got thrown into that and spent quite a few years working for many of the Irish newspapers and then I moved out to Kenya and I worked as a photojournalist there but it was really when I was there that I realized that my ideas were the projects that I wanted to do were a lot more conceptual and maybe less photojournalistic so I was trying to find my way back to the dark room I returned home to Ireland and I did a Masters in Fine Art Photography in Belfast and after that then I made a few projects but slowly but surely researched and looked into different methods of printing and what could I do, what, what would be the thing that would get me back working and living in a dark room and I came across dye transfer printing and I just absolutely loved everything about it and so this is it now. So I work from here in the studio in my um, my home farm and uh, I live in a lovely thatched cottage that my grandfather would have been born in so it's a real honour and a privilege to live here and to live in a place where there's such legacy and heritage and for my own work I really enjoy being here because I have the space to think and to create. I don't have a lot of the distractions of modern fast-paced life and the pressures that go with it and I'm really able to concentrate on making good work. So dye transfer printing was first created in about 1916, but really came to light when the first ever full colour, inglorious Technicolor movies were released. And that was the first one was about 1934. But there's a particular look from the kind of an Americana advertising look from the 40s and 50s with these really bright reds and clean yellows. That's as a result of the dye transfer process. And when we think about movies like Gone with the Wind or The Wizard of Oz, those colours and that vibrancy is, as a, is as, as a result of this process. When I realised that t these beautiful early colour films, these inglorious Technicolor movies have been made using this dye transfer process, immediately I realised, oh, you could take a frame from an old Technicolor movie and reprint it as a photographic still. And so when I started researching the different movies, uh, Alfred Hitchcock was at the top of many of the lists of the greatest movies ever made. And um, in particular, Vertigo was thought to be his greatest colour achievement. Um, the wonderful thing about Alfred Hitchcock is that he came from an art background and so when he went about making his movies he had done all his storyboarding and his planning and and his designs long before he ever got on set so when he got onto set there was very little work to be done because everything was planned out and he used color very very wisely in a very very clever way he used color to move the audience along through the the narrative of the story and to let people know that there's different different themes different things happening that they might might not be aware of and so when you, you look at a Hitchcock movie it's unlike many other movies in that it can be taken apart and you can look at them as individual frames because he put that much care and attention into making his work. The 
process is a long-winded, difficult process. So from start to finish, it usually takes about two weeks to make the first print. Um, I basically take a colour image apart into all its different elements and I ex make lots of different exposures in the dark room for each element and I try and make each one as best as I possibly can. Then I get them all at the end and I put them into my bats of dye and I roll them out one by one and that's the, the easiest way I can make a very difficult process. <laughs> and today we've got a very fast paced world and there's billions of images being uploaded onto the internet every single day and it made me really stop and think about if there's that many images floating around in the in the atmosphere how do we know what's good anymore so it made me stop and think about you know the giants whose shoulders we stand on and the steps that they took and so it made my this very slow paced process actually just pays homage to the colour and the craft that went into making these early colour works and for me to develop it as a craft for myself. So in order to make uh, this, I had to take out a project. I had to take out a copyright license with the estate of Alfred Hitchcock. Um, and they were very receptive to the idea, thankfully. And then also I had to uh, take out another license with Universal Studios, as Universal Studios hold the original camera negative um, of Vertigo. So they then had to go and, and select all the frames that I had chosen and then send them to me. And from there, then I begin making making the work but people have received it very well and I'm very fortunate that the Hitchcock estate were so um, responsive to the idea and also Universal Studios. I'm very fortunate. Um, I've had solo shows of this project in New York, LA, uh, London. Um, I have one coming opening in Munich in June, but this is gonna be the first national showing of the Vertigo project. And I could not think of a better way for it to be than in my hometown of Dungarvan. So it takes about two weeks to get to this point of being able to roll out a print. Um, but I hope you can see that the, the results are different to other photographic prints. Uh, it's a really uh, slow um, process in a really fast-paced environment and fast-paced world. But I think the results are definitely worth it. The colours are a lot, very vibrant, very clean. And I hope that people will appreciate that when they, when they see them in Dungarvan sitting in the windows. Well, the wonderful thing is that people have been so responsive to the idea. So during the first lockdown, I was very much missing the idea of being able to access artwork or knowing that travel was going to be limited for some time. And so I approached the Waterford City Council Arts Office um, and with an idea of putting on an exhibition in the vacant shop fronts. And they brought in then um, uh, Creative Ireland. And so together, the Arts Office Creative Ireland and I have created this exhibition. And the wonderful thing about it is, is that you can go into a town in, yeah, like in Dungarvan, where cultural events have been cancelled, cultural spaces have been closed, but yet it's going to give people the opportunity to see a full and succinct exhibition of works. And what better way to show it than to have to walk throughout the town and to have them framed with these beautiful old shop fronts? This is going to be just great. Now with the exhibition up and running, I'm meeting Jean for a chat about how the art is being received in the town. Jean, this is really unusual for somebody like you whose work is normally displayed in art galleries all over the world to be displayed in the town of Dungarvan. How do you feel about that? 
I am exciting, but also a little nerve wracking as well uh, to bring it into a community where I suppose there's not that much contemporary art um, displayed throughout the town. So you're asking people that maybe don't seek out art galleries to maybe stop and pay a little bit of attention. Um, and so that's that's a little nerve wracking as well. You know, you're close to home, but so far the reception has been really great. So can't ask for any more. Jean, when you undertook this project initially, um, did you have in mind a particular route that people might follow if they were to come and view the imagery? Yes, there is. It starts in the centre of the square, continues up Mary Street, and then down here, down O'Connell Street, back up Main Street and around the, to the Keys so, and finishes at the library. Have you been happy with the response? Yeah, it's been overwhelming. I mean, people really just got behind the project and uh, they've responded really well and they're interested to know more about the process of how they're made and, and more about the movie and you end up having great conversations about Alfred Hitchcock, loads of people uh, either like him or, or hate him and so it's been really, really interesting. And testament really to the long hours that you have put in to the creation of each of these images. Yeah, I mean, I suppose for the younger generation, they never would have seen the words in glorious Technicolor at the end of a movie on the television uh, when they were kids. And so for anybody interested in cinema and, and I suppose film history, this shows you what a Technicolor, original Technicolor movie actually looked like, what the difference of the colour and the vibrancy was and how they were put together with such special care to make these really, really beautiful images. So they can be taken from cinematic to photographic like what we've done here. What you've achieved here is really quite special because the themes of Vertigo are in many ways uh, dark and you've got all this lovely colour in your imagery and also you're bringing it to a big audience here. That's Hitchcock in a nutshell. That's him. Um, covering up the darker themes with something really, really beautiful and then becoming, you know, making work that was very popular to mass audiences all across the world. So that's him. Of course, you couldn't have done this without considerable buy-in from the business community here in Dungarvan. Yeah, the local business community just got behind the project straight away and they've been so encouraging and supportive from the get-go. And it's really great that they've allowed us to use their premises in this way, in a way maybe that they haven't been seen before. So it's been really great. Well, we're going to take a break now, but don't go away because when we come back, we'll be bringing you more from the artwork in the shop fronts in Dungarvan. And we'll also be meeting artist Brenda Malley in County Wicklow. We'll see you shortly. You're welcome back to Nationwide and to Dungarvan and County Waterford, where we're following an art trail of work by print artist Jean Curran. The idea, did it come initially from Jean, really? Or did yeah, you it came from it? Jean, yeah, that's right. Um, you know, she had the whole idea about the vacant windows and everything. Yeah. The project is supported by Creative Ireland and Catherine Collins worked with Jean to bring the exhibition to the shop fronts in Dungarvan. I mean, this initiative, Catherine, very much bringing art to the people. Uh, it's a very good fit for Creative Ireland. So I'm the Creative Waterford coordinator and Creative Waterford is part of the Creative Ireland programme. And in 2020, Creative Waterford gave some additional funding to support the artistic community in particular because they were so heavily hit by the pandemic. And we sponsored a number of initiatives, but this one really caught my eye. It was presented to me by Margaret Organ, our arts officer, who had been working with Jean. And she just had such a fantastic idea about bringing her excellent high quality art out into the vacant windows in the town. And like so many towns in Ireland, there's lots of vacant windows, vacant spaces temporarily. And also the architecture in the town is stunning. So how better to highlight this beautiful work and it's giving something back to the community as well because of course we can't go into galleries and isn't it wonderful to be able to see this excellent high quality art which is reminiscent really for so many older people as well the vertical movies and Hitchcock they have fabulous memories so it's just bringing so many elements together that it was a brilliant thing for Creative Waterford and also for the Arts Office in Waterford Council to come together and support the work. Are there plans to bring it further afield? 
Absolutely, so we're going to keep it here in John Garvin for the summer. It's such a busy tourism town, you know, let everybody get the benefit. And then we're going to move it to Kilmac Thomas because of course villages need this kind of cultural life as well. And Kilmac Thomas is really the centre, the heart of our John Garvin Greenway. So fantastic opportunity for people there and who knows after that. But I mean to have art exhibiting in vacant windows, to have, you know, with fantastic history of the mural arts in Waterford City. And of course our galleries will be reopening. So isn't it brilliant to have all these different types of visual art available to everybody. David Walsh is a business representative in Dungarvan. David, this is a really nice initiative for members of the business community here in Dungarvan to get behind. Absolutely, yeah. It's a fantastic addition to the town. Delighted that Jean has chosen Dungarvan to do it. Obviously with the support of Waterford Arts Centre, Waterford County Council, it's brilliant. There's a lot of empty businesses around the town, unfortunately. With the year we've all had, it's starting to come out of it now, but some of these businesses are actually empty with the last few months and a year or so. Fantastic that they've joined the initiative and they've made their premises available for Jean for this wonderful exhibition. The exhibition is continuing for the summer months. Um, would you be hopeful that this might generate some extra footfall to the town? We certainly hope so. It's a unique product that nowhere else in this country has actually had, so we're delighted to have Jean's exhibition come to the town. Um, footfall hasn't been an option for us now for the last few months. We're now currently opening up, which is fantastic. Um, June Bank holiday coming soon. We'll have people coming from over the country overnighting. So I think it's going to actually bring people down. And I'm hopefully you can share this message for us, which is great. And what was the level of interest from people who are part of the, the Chamber in getting involved in this? Absolutely, yeah. I'm involved in the Chamber of Commerce myself locally. We've spoken to a lot of the businesses and there's actually no shortage of offers to provide their premises, which is great. So they all wanted to get on board, a number have, and I'm delighted to have that way. So it's great for the town. People know the film? Absolutely, yeah. Every one of us would have seen one or two of the Hitchcock films in our time. Um, Vertigo is one of those classics. And here's a very unique product, an exhibition around the, around the movie, I suppose. And you know, the artwork on display around in Garvin really is a great addition to the shop fronts here in the town. Next, we head to County Wicklow for a story about art and enduring love. Valerie Waters went to meet a couple who have been together for over 30 years. And artist Brenda Malley says she's enjoying what she describes now as the best painting years of her life. The story of Brenda and Michael Malley is indeed a love story. Or do we go somewhere new? I'll take care of that. Brenda worked as an air hostess for Aer Lingus in the 1980s. On a flight to New York, she set eyes on Michael and knew in her heart that he was the one. I was called in from reserve to do a New York flight. He was sitting on the aisle and I knew during the flight that the man that I will marry. It was very clear. I saw it happening just like that. I met Brenda March of 84. We were married in December 85. And we had a transatlantic relationship, the best that we could during that time frame. However, when we actually were married, we calculated we only had had five weeks time together. So there was a leap of faith. And there was a bit of this term we have in the family, jumping off the platform. But we knew it was the right thing, and it was a good thing. And here we are, 33 years later. I moved, I thought forever, I was emigrating to Texas. And our three children were born there. But after 12 years, Michael had a job opportunity with an American company to do a project in Dublin. So we came back. The idea being that we'd be here for a few years on assignment, but we actually never went back. The Malleys live in Greystones, County Wicklow. Yeah. Brenda is a painter and Michael is Brenda's administrator. He takes care of all her website correspondence. His skills are in business as he worked in corporate life for 40 years. My family heritage is Irish American. Ireland is very much home. Our three kids, uh, we have two daughters in Dublin, a son in London, and life is good. 
Brenda's studio is in nearby Newtown, Mount Kennedy. I found an art studio five miles from here before we bought the house. So I actually took the art studio and then we had to look for a house that was near enough to get to. Brenda also teaches at the Schoolhouse for Art in Enniskerry. If I was to make any one change, mm -hmm. I think I'd make the background rocks a little bit bluer so they can recede in space a bit. This is a facility set up about three years ago by Neil Condren, who is himself um, a very well-known and gifted portrait artist. And he has invited a team of tutors who are each specialists in their own field to teach there. So he has the teaching facilities, the classroom, the easels, and the administration support. And I can turn up and do what I do, which is teach art. Good for you. Brenda and Michael Malley have recently taken groups of painters to France and Italy and are working on developing painting holidays here in Ireland too. We took a group to France and most recently to Italy. We hope to expand that as well as inbound art tourism coming into Enniskerry to Wicklow, the Garden of Ireland, which we feel has great opportunity, not just across the island of Ireland, but also the UK, Canada, America, other places in Europe. We're creating, I believe, a very vibrant, creative community. And our intention is to make Enniskerry a centre for art in this part of the country. The Malis are living life to the full and are looking forward to seeing their ideas become reality. These are, in a way for me, the best years of our lives. Um, we're still young and we've got plenty of energy and we've got plenty of ideas. And this is the time that we're also released from some of the things that do hold you back, the responsibilities as you're raising a family, um, working in corporate life, whatever, that now we're very free to pursue the things that we want to focus on. Michael and I actually are a great team, and this is a wonderful period of our lives when we can do the, all this together. So I have my part where I'm teaching and I'm painting, and Michael does everything else. And just being my uh, rock and strength and support here so that I can do what I do. I believe we're perfectly matched. We have different skill sets. We have completely different backgrounds. We do approach things at times from different parts of the spectrum. But we are a great team, and we do come together at the end of the day and build upon our individual strengths, working on that together. What a lovely couple. And good luck to Brenda, who will be giving art classes once the COVID restrictions are lifted later in the summer. Well, that's all we have time for on this evening's Nationwide. Remember to put Dungarvan on your list of places to visit so you too can follow the art trail and see Jean Curran's work. And so, from all of us on the Nationwide team here in Dungarvan in County Waterford, good evening. On next Monday's Nationwide, opening up and getting back up and running after the COVID lockdown. We have stories from Wicklow, Sligo and Galway where life is returning to some kind of normal. Yes, indeed, the Nationwide team is off to Galway to find out more about the new drone delivery service they've rolled out there. Oh, the changing times we live in. <laughs> Don't forget, it's the final Late Late Show of the season tonight. Katie Taylor, Sonia O'Sullivan and Toy Show star Adam King are all in the mix. See you at 9.35.